Hi, I'm Tracy Hatton from Resilient Organisations based in New Zealand. Well, potable water um, is really the water that we need to actually live, the water that, that we drink. It's commonly run um, as a three water system, so water and wastewater and a sewage. This primer focused just solely on the, the sort of potable water. Um, end of it, although of course the wastewater is a, is a crucial interconnected part of that system. Um, potable water is, is uh, you know, the very lowest thing on the, the hierarchy of needs of what we need to actually get by. Um, and it's quite scary to see how many countries in the world um, don't have good access to clean and safe potable water and how vulnerable some of our major urban cities are who are relying on infrastructure that was built over a hundred years ago and with a real lack of investment um, over those years to, to cope with the growth that we've had in urban cities. Uh, and there's some real big scary vulnerabilities out there uh, that we need to address. In the newspaper today, India's sixth largest city has run out of water. Now its residents are relying on water tankers. Its businesses um, are closed in many cases, its hotels are closed because we, we, just, we can't do much of anything. Uh, without water. And we've become so reliant on the, the modern system where we simply turn on the tap uh, and we can drink it. Um, we don't have the, the, the ability to, to cope um, without. The primer is aimed at those people actually making decisions regarding investment in water, those running our, our water infrastructures. Um, often that's a, a function of uh, a, a council owned or a locally owned um, body. It's for the councillors that have to make the investment decisions across all of the infrastructures in the cities. So really it's for anybody at all involved in, in decision making and running. There's also uh, one of the, the interesting things that I found in the primer um, is to develop resilience we really need to consider both the, the physical infrastructure resilience the capability of the organisations that are running it to embed resilience thinking and to operate in an adaptable manner, but also the third and often overlooked area, which is the customers, who need to understand and value resilience in their systems, who need to be involved in dialogues about the funding of resilience and what are acceptable tolerance levels for both the quality and the quantity. So to put the primer together, I interviewed uh, the operators of the water infrastructure um, and the water companies in Australia, New Zealand and America, um, and also their policy um, influences, um, because often there are policy levers um, regarding particularly around critical infrastructure uh, resilience. I also interviewed uh, an engineer working um, in the water industry. And pulled together from, from all of those interviews, uh, together with sort of grey literature, reports, documents, academic literature, the common themes about what, what was happening in the resilience space for potable water at the moment, what needs to happen, um, and what would, what would incentivise and influence uh, change um, and greater investment and effort in resilience. most interesting thing I learned was the voice of the customer being really one sort of leg of a three-legged tripod that would help us to get more um, rapid movement in the resilience space. That some more sophisticated conversations were needing to be had with customers to understand the trade-offs between cost and resilience and that that, that was only happening in a very limited and sporadic fashion um, in some um, territories. Melbourne, for example, has having conversations with its customers, which is helping to clarify their resilience goals and helping to clarify what charges are needed uh, for water to make those goals possible.